Hello, brother David. Shiranji Vaigar Bhavanara. Good evening, David. Good evening. Hello, brother Shiranji. Thank you. <laughs> How are you? So nice to see you. Shiranji Vaigar Bhavanara. Good, I got good. You too. Good, Nana. Now, Kali Nostuna, you like it up away, or I can to Nostuna. Now, you better than Kutu. <laughs> Why aren't you in there? That is there. Yes, say hello. It ran a petrol and take I did okay and Kuntan and then there. Good evening, brothers. Good evening to all of you. Uh, this is Anand Joshua, the executive director of uh, CIM. We are happy to have all of you today in this uh, webinar. Uh, this is going to be a wonderful webinar. We thank and praise God for uh, enabling and giving us this opportunity to, you know, uh, bring you together and also have the presence of uh, Mr. Valentine Davida, who is going to share his experience and uh, uh, basically from a biblical perspective on board governance. And uh, we want to welcome you. Uh, before moving further, I'll ask, uh, I am requesting David uh, to share a few ground rules as we move further. further. David. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, once again, welcome to all of you. And uh, as uh, Mr. Ranan mentioned, I'll just quickly run through a few um, instructions that uh, I'd like to give before we start the webinar so that uh, we'll ensure that everything goes so smoothly and you also get an understanding of how we're going to move forward. Uh, so, um, as all of you have registered for this um, webinar and it's a registered webinar, I request you to kindly ensure that your display name that you're using for Zoom is the same name as that which you've given when registering, uh, because we are not able to, we won't be able to hold more than uh, 100 participants or a designated number of participants. So, um, if your name does not match what is then the registration list, uh, you would, we would have to remove you. So please ensure that it is uh, matching the registration name. And uh, kindly keep your microphone in mute uh, during um, the time the resource person is speaking so that there won't be any background noise. If you uh, are invited to speak, you can uh, unmute and then uh, share your question or share your uh, thought. And you can also uh, use the raise hand option, which is there both in the phone and in the computer. Uh, to let us know if you'd like to say anything, then we'll unmute you and you can speak. Um, so uh, please be alert during the uh, entire um, webinar so because uh, 
you might be if you want to ask any questions or you you might have to respond to particular questions based on what you know um you can uh, answer it at that time so please feel free uh, to do that at any point of time during the question answer session and uh, uh, that way we'll be able to share our thoughts with one another um and any uh, technical issue with uh, the zoom app that is the audio or video related issues you can just uh, contact either sam blessin or me through the chat box um and uh, please ensure that you send that only to either sam or myself and not to everyone in the chat box in zoom you'll be able to choose who you would like to send the message to uh, so please ensure you select one of us for that when you ask a question you can um, change it to everyone the chat option to everyone i think this i have already mentioned uh, the chat option you uh, you can use it to ask your questions but please ensure that uh, the question goes to everyone and not just a particular person otherwise the resource person or we will not be able to see the question and answer it and uh, finally um, please note that we will not be uh, giving the ppt or a recording of this webinar so um, in case uh, you are looking forward to that i just want to inform you now itself that we won't be um, sending you the ppt or the recording i now would like to hand it uh, back to mr anand joshua to continue thank you david thank you for the introduction uh, we are happy to see many of you here many friends uh, very close to cim and people who know uh, sir valentine david we are really thrilled to have you with us uh, one of the information that we also want to let you know that uh, the the presentation notes of uh, mr valentine david r is being sent to your email id uh, all of you have uh, few minutes back we sent it to you so you would have received it on your email uh, feel free sorry for uh, the delay we were uh, just able to send it to you all of you would have received it uh, is it possible take a print out or if it's possible to have it on your screen you can have it so that you can take notes for that so thank you for that uh, i want to introduce uh, mr valentine davida uh, it's really a privilege for us to have uh, dr valentine with us um, he, you as you know he was a uh, uh, former executive director of aga institute and then uh, he also was the former church relations director of world vision india and uh, the other uh, uh, most important thing is he is one of the founding members of christian institute of management and we are really happy to have uh, sir valentine take this session the founding member of uh, cim handling a session on uh, you know board governance uh, this uh, we decided on this particular topic because uh, this is becoming one of the most uh, critical thing in mission nowadays uh, there are a lot of uh, good examples at the same time we also have lot of uh, examples which are not bringing glory to god so what we thought was we will present before all of you uh, a deeply spiritual perspective that will help us to understand how god can be glorified through good governance and without wasting much time i hand over the session to mr valentine over to you now and you have to unmute yeah yeah thank you sorry <laughs> yeah uh, praise god for this privilege and opportunity to be with all of you and share this uh, moments uh, this is really a precious time for all of us we are we are privileged that we can come together like this in this kind of a platform and uh, engage in this very very crucial matter um, uh, as anand just mentioned the teaching notes has been sent already to your email if it's possible if you can take it you can follow it because i'll be going basically on the on the material that i have prepared to share this uh, this evening this afternoon uh, also want to begin by saying that uh, this is about governance and in terms of understanding how god wants us to uh, you know run our organizations in a, in the way that he has planned and he has purpose for us so it is a it's a biblical perspective based on Uh, what god has revealed to us from his word so i am going to be continuously going back to scripture again and again and again uh, i am not going to base on any other 
where any other resource it's the word of god that i mean i'll be going to so it's uh, it's deeply uh, you know rooted in and in in god's word that i will be sharing from so before we begin shall we just pause for a word of prayer and commit this time to the lord in prayer let's pray father lord we thank you for this wonderful time we thank you lord for what you have shown to shown to us and father as we look into your word we we look up to you and lord we just leave everything into your hand that lord you will guide us lead us and help us to be so in tune with your word and uh, lord allow your word to penetrate every aspect of our personal lives as well as our organizations lord jesus and see the wonderful results that you wish to bring to every one of us and in our organizations thank you father we give you all the glory and praise and in jesus most precious name we pray amen amen so uh, i'd like to first of all begin with psalm 19 <clears throat> psalm 19 verses 1 to 4 psalm 19 verses 1 to 4 or rather the first part of the fourth verse from the first verse to the first part of the fourth verse psalm 19 verse 1 the heavens declare the glory of god the firmament shows his handiwork day unto day utters speech and night unto night reveals knowledge there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard their line has gone out throughout all the earth and their words to the end of the world so as we read this passage what we realize is god is uh, intervening into our everyday life into our everyday affairs he is intervening into the material things of life so uh, you know we need to realize that Uh, when we are in this relationship with god it's an it's an amazing opportunity for us to see how uh, you know god's word is practical god's word is not just something that is a something up there as a spiritual understanding it becomes very very practical it becomes very very real it becomes applicable into our everyday life situations and circumstances and the way we we look after our organizations and way we run our organization every material aspect is in the purview of god uh, so so this is the, the fundamental understanding from which i come from that i'm saying everything is sacred our our handling of our organizations and building up of our organizations is a sacred work and and god is intervening into the material dimensions of life so when we say the word became flesh uh, it is not just in terms of uh, our personal salvation it is in terms of entire life as a whole everything is is god's concern and and that is my primary uh, basis from which i want to begin from then i li- i would like us to go to uh, this very familiar passage in genesis chapter 1 and i'll be really uh, staying on this passage genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 28 this uh, three verses and uh, what uh, we are, we see in these three verses is what is known as the uh creation mandate it's called it's known as the creation mandate or uh, the terminology that is being used in uh, amongst uh, theological circles as i understand is called cultural mandate as well so i have given a uh, a youtube link uh, in my teaching notes so when you have time please uh, uh, check out that youtube link and you will see uh, what is the uh, what is it that we are understanding now in terms of the creation or the cultural mandate so let me just read genesis 1:26 to 28 genesis 1:26 then god said let us make man in our image according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so god created man in his own image in the image of god he created him male and female he created them then god blessed them and god said to them be fruitful and multiply fill the earth and subdue it have dom- have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth now when we look at genesis 126 we see it has two parts to it the first part is let us make god said let us make man in our image according to our likeness and then the second part is let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and so forth so uh, the aspect of dominion into the material things of life 
comes from the image of God. So as we, as we understand the image of God, as we grow in the image of God, as we grow in our closeness with Him and our understanding of Him and our relationship with Him, that relationship is not just a spiritual aspect of our life, it goes into our dominion. Dominion and governance and taking care of every responsibility that God has given to us. And every, every aspect of dominion, of, of leadership, of responsibility is on the basis of our image, of the image that is, uh, that, that is now being formed uh, in, into God's, God's nature and God's character more and more. Uh, we, we, we know the problem of the fall of man because of which the image of God in us has been marred. But praise God in Christ Jesus, we have been reunited with Christ. And now we are, re, we are being reformed and recreated and we are being rebirthed into the image of God. So the image of God is now being reformed in us. So that is our, our personal journey. But that personal journey uh, 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 reaches forward and moves into the dimension of dominion. And that is the understanding that God wants us to have. So uh, the creation mandate itself is, is God's intervention into human activity and into, into material things of life. And everything is, is understood in terms of the image of God. So we cannot separate these two things. Then come to the, we'll jump over to the 28th verse, Genesis 128, and God blessed them. And we must note that, that this is very important. God blessed them. So there is a great uh, positioning for us that when we function in the, in the cultural or the creation mandate in terms of our governance, then there is the stamp of God's blessing. God's, you know, amazing hand rests upon us. So for, for us to know we are being, uh, we are totally in alignment with God, totally in alignment with what he wants us to accomplish is being confirmed for, confirmed for us in the 28th verse. Then God blessed them and God said to them, now you have the five dimensions of the cultural mandate or the creation mandate. First is be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So you see the, it's a five dimensional aspect of our uh, role and responsibility in terms of God's governance over everything that God wants us to handle. So this is the cultural and the creation mandate. This is the primary basis in which God set up life itself. All of the whole of man, whole of society, the whole of uh, human interactions was set up on this framework. This is the basic framework in which everything should function. But because of the fall, uh, you know, we have completely gone away from what God's intent, God's desire was and God's purpose and plan was. And so now when we are in Christ Jesus, we come back to the original original. Uh, blueprint. We come back to the original framework, the original basis and, and the foundation in which God set it up for us. So the more and more we come back, that is where we're going to enjoy the immense blessing of God. So Genesis 128 is really the framework that we're going to use. I have a PowerPoint there, which David will help me to keep uh, releasing as I go through this one by one. So let's begin. So the first dimension of the creation mandate, the first dimension of the creation mandate is to be fruitful. Now, what does it mean to be fruitful in terms of an organization? Uh, in the in the in, you know in the New Testament and other places also uh, we have we understand what fruitfulness is from a, uh, from the way we read it in the Word of God. Uh, there is no uh, there is no bifurcation here. It is all one and the same, but I want to understand being fruitful in an, in an organizational manner. And I would say being fruitful is how we take care of our audience, how we take care of our customers, how we take care of those whom we serve. Uh, each of us in our organizations are serving a particular need, are serving a particular target audience. They're serving a particular uh, area of concern. So uh, I'm sure all of us are organizationally are conscious of it. We are aware of it. So fruitfulness is essentially how we can service, how we can take care, how we can bless, 
how we can enrich our audience. So that is what fruitfulness is all about. Or in other words, it's basically being a blessing to others. Fruitfulness is about being a blessing to others. Uh, so that is what I, I've shown there in the slide. Uh, it's about customer consciousness that, that is so necessary for us. And that is the first aspect of the creation mandate in terms of, of governance that God wants us to have. So uh, what is it that we need to have? Uh, what, what is it that we need to consider? Now, what happens is, what is it that, uh, before I go to what is it that we need to consider, I would like to look at what is it that hinders us? Uh, I know I come from uh, sales and marketing. And uh, when, uh, before I joined Haggai Institute, I worked for a uh, multinational company uh, for 12 years in the marketing side. And, and, I, and I was very much in terms of uh, working in terms of customers and relating with customers. Uh, and I found be, being a, a, a profit making company, uh, I found I was always clashing with my, uh, in my, with my managing director because his agenda was purely profits. Uh, his agenda was driven by profits and profits alone. Whereas for me, uh, concern for the customer good of the customer, well-being of the customer, customer being benefited, customer's life being enriched was what I considered as foremost and what was, what was most important. So I grew the market, the sales increased. Uh, I, was the, I was the top salesperson in my company, but I was clashing with my boss because the, the contradiction was he was profit driven, whereas I was customer driven. And this is a, in a, in a profit, uh, scenario profit making scenario but for non-profit situations you know we also can fall into certain problems the problems that we can fall into is we become budget driven the budget is is what drives our our servicing of our customers we, we decide that we can only do this much and not anymore because this is all the budget that we have and our budget decides that we have taken these kind of decisions and this is what we will do. So many times um, the, the, the budgets and many other, many other issues may also come in the way that prevent us from being concerned and conscious of our customers. So as, as governance, that is what we need to be, uh, we need to be uh, you know, uh, concerned about or be focused on and, and look at what is hindering us, what is preventing us, or what is stopping us as an organization to be more and more customer conscious? Um, is there something that has come in our way? Have we become so big uh, and so full of uh, you know, uh, processes and, uh, and, and details, and I have to do this, we have to do that, we have to take this step, we have to take that step, that in the whole process of what we are doing in terms of an organization, we have forgotten the customer. That is the most dangerous thing that can happen in any situation. And so the first biblical basis for us is to be fruitful. Now, when we say fruitful, the simple analogy that I would like to share is a fruit, uh, a tree bears fruit. You know, nowadays uh, it is summertime. We are all uh, beginning to enjoy the mango seasons. Uh, the mango season has come on us and we are beginning to get some good mangoes now. Now, when you see a mango tree fully laden with fruit, fruit. Does the mango tree consume its own fruit? Definitely not. We consume the fruit and we enjoy the fruit and we say this particular variety is very good, it's very tasty. Uh, the, the, the organization's purpose of existence is not for itself. We are not existing for ourselves. We are existing for our customers. We exist to meet the need of our audience. So fruitfulness is about being a blessing to the people whom we serve. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. You know, we have to see from God's perspective, what is it that God wants us to do as an organization to our end uh, receiver? 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So when we are in tune with the, with the Lord through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit guides us as, as godly organizations as to how we can serve our customers. What are the great things that God has in store for them? What are the amazing things that God has in, has in store for them? 
So we come up with creative ideas, wonderful ideas, because we are not just thinking from our own understanding, but we are thinking from God's perspective and God reveals it to us through his spirit. Now, what we need to realize is that fruit bearing, fruit bearing is not an option. It is a mandate. Fruit bearing is a mandate. Uh, John 15, 8, uh, the Lord said, by this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. So as disciples of Jesus Christ, fruit bearing is not an option at all. It is not, oh, we will try. As an organization, we will try to serve our customers. That is no option. That is not an option at all. We are here for our customers, period. We need to consider that con uh, continuously. And we, and we see so many other places where, uh, you know, uh, the word of God is so categorical saying that, um, that if we don't bear fruit, uh, the, the tree will be cut down. Let me go to one verse in, uh, in John's gospel, sorry, Matthew's gospel, chapter 7. Matthew's gospel, chapter 7, uh, and verse se uh, 7, verse 19. Matthew 7, 19. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Friends, this is a stern warning for us, even as Christian organizations. We should not begin to think that, oh, I, we are a Christian organization, nothing will happen to us. If a Christian organization, if a godly organization is not serving its customers, not caring for the people ultimately for whom it exists, it will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. That is what we need to understand. I have given... Uh, several other references in my teaching notes, so you're most welcome to go through that as you uh, read it later on. The second uh, aspect of the creation mandate, the second aspect is multiply. First is be fruitful, which is, I said, the customer consciousness dimension of the organization. The second is multiply. What is multiplication? Multiplication is increasing the fruit bearers multiplying the fruit bearers, increasing the number of people who have a concern for the customer and, and the end, end beneficiary. Care, that kind of people need to be developed within our organization. We have to multiply the people, invest in people. So this is what I, what I would like to call as the capacity building function within every organization. So capacity building must be focused on giving people a vision within the organization. You have, you're all, every Christian, or every godly organization, Christian organization must be not just people who are good workers, sincere workers, honest workers, all of that is good. But what we need to fill our organization with is with visionaries. People who can vision, people who are thinking big, people who are thinking out of the box, people who are always saying, what more does God want us to do? want us to do? Where else should we go? So the aspect of multiplication is therefore very crucial in governance. Uh, we have to invest, capacity building, investing in people is, is a crucial matter. What does the word of God teach us in terms of multiplication? I would like, like to go to Isaiah chapter 61 verses uh, 3 to 4, which, we, which is what uh, uh, Isaiah 61 is what Jesus quoted in the Nazarene Manifesto in Luke's Gospel, chapter 4. But I'm going to Isaiah 61. I'm looking at verses 3 and 4. To console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. Now, that is all aspects of the target audience. To console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Now you see the shift that happens that they may be called trees of righteousness. That means when we invest in the lives of people, uh, they should become trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And what will they do? Fourth verse, and they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. And friends, this is capacity building. When we talk of multiplication in terms of governance, this is the, the Isaiah 61, especially the fourth verse, gives us the biblical basis for what kind of people should be, should be raised up. 
what kind of caliber, what kind of quality of people should we raise up? They shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the desolation, desolations of many generations. Now you see uh, in the entire gospels, Jesus invested in his disciples. Throughout his, in, in, in his ministry, uh, his primary time on, uh, essentially was in terms of caring for his disciples and raising them up and discipling them and, and, and ensuring that they develop and grow. Let me pick up some few, uh, pick up a few verses, uh, especially in John 17. John 17, as we know, is the high priestly prayer of our Lord Jesus. And he's praying to the Father, but look at what he's praying for. John 17, verse 8. For I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them. So look at the capacity building that is going on. I have given, he's telling the Father, Jesus is telling the Father, for I have given to them, that is to us, to the disciples, I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them. And I've known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. Now in verse 9, John 17, verse 9, I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. Look at, look at the backing that Jesus is giving to his disciples. I, have, I pray for them. Then John 17, uh, same chapter, 15 to 18. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. So capacity building, multiplication is about capacity building. What kind of caliber of people are we raising in our organizations? Raising people who will go out and challenge the world. People who will take on the powers of darkness head on. Today, we need caliber of people in our Christian organizations, in our churches, who are men and women who can take on the powers of darkness. Satan is creating havoc all around us. Where are the, where are the soldiers? Where are the, uh, where, are the, where are the powerful warriors? Where are they going to come from? They have to emerge from our organizations. And unless and until we multiply, develop the fruit bearers, intentionally work on capacity building, only then it will happen. We have to raise up giants from within our organization. They are not of the world, just as I'm not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. How much uh, our people in our organizations need sanctification in the word of God so that they are raised up as powerful men and women who can go out into the world and bring God's kingdom into the world. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. So you see, uh, that is what God wants, uh, wants to create. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14, Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of of his knowledge in every place. What is the caliber of people that we are raising? Men and women who diffuse the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Men and women who do not bring a stink, but actually bring a fragrance. Today, if, I, if we were to honestly examine the caliber of people that we have raised from our organization, sometimes it's very, very unfortunate. We have raised people who bring a stink, not people who are bringing a fragrance. Uh, 2 Corinthians 2.14, Paul is saying, through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. 2 Corinthians 3, 2 and 3, you are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is of the heart. What is, what is Paul saying? He's saying to the Corinthians, Corinthians, we have invested in you. We invested in you so that you became an epistle read by everybody. Uh, isn't that our goal in capacity building? What do we want to do in capacity building? We want to raise up people who will be epistles written and read by others. 
people who will read their lives and say, here are men and women of God. And that's the kind of, uh, uh, you know, intentionality and focus and, and drive that we need to have in capacity. I feel sometimes when I look at organizations and look at the capacity building activity that happens within organizations, I feel it is all more like a, uh, let's just get it done. Let's just do it for the sake of doing something. You know, we need to conduct a retreat for our staff. Let's have a retreat for our staff. Let's have a, a get together for our staff. Let's do something for our staff. So we do some activity for our staff, more like a, uh, more like keeping them occupied or having some kind of, uh, some kind of uh, work done or activity done to say that this, this was also completed in our calendar, in this year's calendar. I think that is very pathetic. We cannot have that kind of investment, capacity investment done to our people. We have to be in very, very intentional. We, have, we must have very clear focus and an idea. We have to measure, have our people grown, have our people developed, have them moved on to become those kind of powerful men and women of God who will shake the world. Where are we going to raise those kind of people? It has to come from Christian organizations. So first item of the, of the creation mandate is being fruitful, which I said is customer consciousness. And the second, uh, second part, second dimension, the second part of the creation or cultural mandate is multiply, be fruitful, multiply, which, which is about capacity building or investing in our people. Now let's go to the third dimension of the cultural mandate. The third dimension of the cultural mandate is fill the earth. Now fill the earth. Now what is this? What is this one? What is the meaning of filling the earth? Filling the earth is really the uh, connection here with the Great Commission. Uh, go ye into all the world. Go ye into all the world. That part of the Great Commission is where uh, that it connects here with the with the uh, with the cultural or the creation mandate when uh, when god says fill the earth that is god wants us to move into every dimension of life there is no dimension of life or any activity of life any work uh, any kind of profession which is outside of the sovereignty of god Every work is part of God's sovereignty, God's rule, God's authority. And we need to, we need to uh, understand that, you know, it is, uh, it, is, uh, it is every part of the world. So going into all the world is not just geographically to go into all the world, but to go into every profession, every activity, every sphere of social life and societal life. Uh, God's people need to be there to bring everything under under the uh, under the uh, under the uh, under the rule of God, under the authority of God, under the shadow of God. Today, so society has gone completely out of God's hand uh, because of man's rebellion and man's rejection of God. Everything is out of out of God's uh, you know a, a rule and authority, and so we see the huge confusion and chaos that is happening. But we need to realize that every aspect of life is under the sovereignty of God. That is what filling the earth is all about. So this is this function, I would call this as the interdependency function within the organization. That means in, in, the, in, an, in, a, in any organization, we have, we have, we have various functions and we must always build interdependency. Uh, not allow any, of, any department or any function within an organization to become a silo but by itself and say, oh, I am finance, you are admin, uh, you, are, uh, you are in, uh, in this function, you are in media and you are in this, you are in that. Uh, I, can, I have nothing to do with it. This kind of silos is the most dangerous thing that can happen to organizations. We have to, we have to regard each other, respect each other, understand every function is under the purview of God. Everything is, is, in, is in God's, under God's authority. So interdependency of functions within the organization and interdependency of organization to organization. So if we are, a, we are a particular organization with a certain uh, a mandate, 
uh, with a certain uh, uh, vision and mission statement that we have and we say this is what we are here to do let us always remember that we cannot become whole and soul we are here to work with other organizations we are here to work with other churches we are work, we are here to uh, share and and to give and to interact and to learn and to grow facilitate support one another encourage one another network with each other you know this understanding must happen for us and especially in this time in our country we cannot afford to become silos at all i think for too long we all be, we all became so i centered oh my organization my church my denomination my we are doing this friends we cannot be like this anymore the time is for that is all over that childishness time is over now we better move on to maturity we better become people who are interdependent that we will realize we all need one another we all have strengths we need to share those strengths we need to be corrected we need to learn from each other so this interdependency functioning is so critical in filling the earth this is an understanding that we need to have now uh, i want to quote uh, abraham kuiper uh, if you were to google abraham kuiper kuiper is spelled as k u y p e r abraham kuiper was uh, the former uh, uh, prime minister of netherlands he was also a theologian and uh, he has written a lot of books and uh, He, he, here is one of his very famous quotes what he says here is there is not a square inch in the whole domain of our human existence over which christ who is the who is the sovereign over all does not cry mind let me read that read that again there is not a square inch in the whole domain of our human existence over which christ who is the sovereign over all does not cry mind so he is emphasizing very powerfully that uh, all aspects of human existence is under the sovereignty of god so science engineering medicine law uh, education every field is actually god's field and and we need to realize that god wants us to uh, penetrate every field and and become leaders and leaders of every field people who are who are the trend setters people who are the pioneers in each of those fields some 24 some 24 verse 1 the earth is the lord's and its fullness the world and, and those who dwell therein some 89 verse 11 the heavens are yours the earth also is your yours and the world and all its fullness you have founded them and so this is what god wants us to understand now i'd like us to go to two very important passages personally for me these are uh, i would say the kind of pivotal passages in my own personal life ephesians 1 9 and 10 and colossians 1 19 and 20 let me first read ephesians 1 ephesians 1 9 and 10 having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him friends you see the connection with uh, from here to where i started in psalm 19 that god is a god who is intervening into the material world god is wanting us to bring his image his character and his nature into every dimension of human life So Ephesians one nine and ten. Let let me read it again. Having made known to us the mystery of His will. So the this is what God is uh, showing us. What is the mystery of His will? According to His good pleasure, which He purposed in Himself. And God is revealing to us the mystery of His will. What is this will? Tenth verse. That in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, He might gather together in one all things in Christ. All things. both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him so when we talk about the good news of the gospel let's not reduce the gospel message to a personal salvation oh my sins are forgiven i am re i am redeemed i am reconciled with god now i have uh, you know god is waiting for me to go to heaven uh, all of that you know that's that's unfortunately where many evangelicals 
have have pinned their faith on it has become very very narrow gospel and and when we are here especially going through this kind of a crisis in which we are in god bless me god take care of me god protect me this is the kind of prayer i i participate in so many groups with so many fellowships and so many groups what are they praying for they are praying for themselves god please bless us god protect us god take care of us they are not at all conscious of god's plan and god's purpose what is god doing god is bringing everything into himself the ephesians 1:10 that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times he might gather together in one all things in christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him so every domain is god's and and i feel and i'm i'm slightly digressing here i'm saying how do we raise our children today i feel very sad when i look at christian homes we tell our children tambi please study because if you do not study you will not get a, a good job you will not make money you will not become comfortable so what have we told our children we have told them that the material things of life those are the most important things we have not told them that god wants you to be excellent in your science excellent in your career excellent in your in your studies so that you will bring the dispensation of god in that particular domain you are preparing yourself so that you will be an instrument of god to reconcile all things that particular domain it may be engineering it may be science it may be medicine you have to bring that domain into the into the governance of god to bring together all things in christ you see sadly i i i do not see this happening sufficiently in christian homes i hope and pray that christian homes will raise up giants from our homes and it's also for for organization to raise up people and to and to realize that fill the earth is is really to bring together all things in christ colossians 1:19 and 20 for it pleased the father that in him that is in christ all the fullness should dwell and by him that is through christ to reconcile all things to himself by him whether things on earth or things in heaven having made peace through the blood of his cross the cross is central the cross is pivotal you cannot you cannot uh, there is no way to go outside of the cross or go through any other route other than the cross the cross is the way but when we go through the cross what is it that is ultimately our destination is to bring together all things to himself whether things on earth or things in heaven having made peace through the blood of the cross and so ephesians 1:9 and 10 and colossians 1:19 and 20 to me is where all of this is so critical for us to understand that uh, god wants us to be people who fill the earth and this is where it connects with the connects with the great commission and god has made us to be those instruments in his hand to reconcile all things to christ you can read second corinthians 5 18 and 18 to 20 where god has made us to be ambassadors for christ so that is the third dimension of the creation or cultural cultural mandate so we have seen three parts to the cultural mandate uh, first one is be fruitful second one is to multiply and third one Uh, is to fill the earth now let's go to the fourth dimension of the cultural mandate the creation mandate which is to subdue it now what is subduing what is this dimension of the cultural mandate in terms of organizations what does that mean for us subduing is the research dimension god wants us to subdue the earth that means god wants us to replenish god wants us to understand every aspect of work and see how it can be developed how it can be nurtured how it can be made to come to its point of excellence so subduing is the dimension of of research in organizations organizations that must build must be built for excellence nothing that we should do should be mediocre mediocrity cannot be accepted at all and in christian organizations this is a such a crucial matter don't we 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 are we must be very very strong as leaders of organizations we must not tolerate mediocrity we are we are serving the king of kings the lord of lords the god of heaven and earth who is a god of excellence so we must invent in invest in research we must invest in study 
we must invest in developing every field in which we work in. Nothing should be taken and done in a very shoddy and haphazard man manner. Organizations must be serious about excellence. And that is so cru crucial for us to understand. So the subdued dimension is the research dimension of organizations. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Colossians 3, 23 and 20, 23, 24. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ. Let me read that again. Colossians 3, 23, 24. And whatever you do, do it heartily. That means with an attitude, with a commitment. Do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance that you serve for you serve the Lord Christ. I would like to uh, look at a very beautiful example. I like this example very much. Uh, about the about uh, the Gospel of Luke, uh, of course, Luke, uh, the doc, Dr. Luke, who wrote the Gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostles. Uh, we, we, when we read the two books that Dr. Luke wrote, he wrote it to one man. His audience was just one person called Theophilus. Um, we do not know any other uh, detail about Theophilus except the reference to Theophilus in in the Gospel of Luke and Acts of the Apostles. But just let me read the first four verses of the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Luke 1, 1 to 4. Inasmuch as many have taken in hand to set in order a narrative of those things which have been fulfilled among us. I would like you to, I'd like all of us to listen to the process by which Luke begins to write the Gospel of Luke. Now the second verse. Just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word delivered them to us. Verse 3, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write to you an orderly account. Write to you an orderly account, most excellent Theophilus, that you may know the certainty of those things in which you were instructed. Look at the, look at the seriousness that Luke takes to write to one man, just to write uh, a narrative of the work of Jesus to one man, look at the effort that he has taken. Gospel of Luke and Acts of the Apostles were two letters that, that were written to just one person. The audience was just one person. Now, <clears throat> we may ask, was it, was it worth it? Was, was that so much effort that Luke put for writing to one person? It is a personal letter. Gospel of Luke and Acts of the Apostles were not general letters like many of the letters that Paul wrote. Luke wrote to a, to a single person, a personal letter. Has it, has it helped? Today, when we have the New Testament, imagine a New Testament without the Gospel of Luke and without the Acts of the Apostles. His investment into one man has produced results into millions. Millions over centuries have been benefited by the Gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostles because one man did diligent work. So diligence, research, study, excellence is cannot be something that, that we can overlook at all, can be bypassed. We have to, in organizations, this has to be given serious attention, serious care, serious concern. And we see the result, result of this in the life of Domi uh, life of Daniel. Uh, Daniel's uh, life, we all know how powerful it was. I just want to look at the sixth chapter, Daniel chapter six, how kind of a caliber of man he was. Daniel six verses two to four. And over these three governors, there were three governors uh, under Darius, over these three governors for, of whom Daniel was one, that, that the satraps might give account to them so that the king should suffer no loss then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no charge or fault because he was faithful 
nor was there any error or fault found in him. What a testimony, what a testimony. This is the caliber of people, caliber of work that Christian organizations that, that must have. Our, our audits, our income tax, the government, when they, when they scrutinize us, scrutinize our work, scrutinize our accounts, scrutinize our books, they should say, we find no fault in Christian organizations. They are tremendous. They are, their work is excellent. They are the best. They are the ones who should actually guide us. Daniel set that standard. My friends, I'm saying, if Daniel set that standard, why is it not possible for us to set the standard in our country today? As God's people, should we not be the leaders in every field? Because we are people of diligence, people of hard work, people who have researched, people who have studied our, 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 uh, our areas of work. We know thoroughly what has to be done. We are not lazy. We are not half-hearted half in, in the work that we do. All of this is matters of governance. Excellence is, is so crucial. So this is what we understand when we talk about the, th the fourth dimension of the creation mandate, which is to subdue it. Okay, so harness, diligence, research, and excellence is what comes under the fourth dimension of the cultural mandate, which is to subdue. Then we come to the last one. The last one is to have dominion. Now, this is the most exciting one for me because it goes back to Genesis 126. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion. So the very first part of the creation itself, why was man created? Man was created to have dominion. Now, what does that word dominion mean? God wants us to be his, his regents. Uh, you know, when we were under the British we had viceroys. Uh, viceroys were, were representatives of the monarchy. Uh, they were here to represent the crown in England. They were not the monarchs. They were not the king or the, they were the, king or the queen, but they were the viceroys. They were executives, executing the mind of the monarch. Friends, we very often use the word stewardship. I like the word stewardship. But I feel stewardship is slightly reducing the real characteristic or the real profile to which God has called us. God has called us to have dominion. That means it's an executive role. It is a, it is a role of being a representative of the king himself over all the earth. Is that the way we live today? Is that the way we run our organizations today? I wonder. God's Final, the, the fifth dimension is to have dominion. And I want to say this, that throughout, you know, the Bible, it is the same principle. Uh, let's read Psalm 8, Psalm 8, 4 to 8. What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the parts of the sea, seas. So you see the aspect of dominion. Now, I want us to understand this. Now, here, this, this age, we are in one age. In this age, the create, creation mandate is, is the framework by which this age was supposed to function. That is why God gave us the creation mandate right in the very beginning. Genesis chapter 1, right in the beginning, he gave us the creation mandate so that we will understand the creation mandate and function on the framework on, of the creation mandate. But sadly, to a large extent, we have not understood it. I hope that even the little time that we have here on earth, we will truly bring the creation mandate into its full functionality. But let's understand this, that this age is only a preparation for the age to come. There is a new age that is coming, a new heaven and a new earth, a new material, a new material where we will have a new body. This, it, is, it is not the same body. It will be the glorified body that Jesus had when he rose up uh, and, 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 and came. He, his body was a different body. It was a new material made up of some made up of, of 
some substance or some content or some material that is so different that new material materiality is is what we will have in the new heaven and new earth where god is wanting us to be co-rulers with him i want us to look at hebrews chapter 2 and verse 5 hebrews chapter 2 verse 5 says for he has not put the world to come of which we speak in subjection to angels uh, though it's it's a slightly uh, it sounds in a it's a verse that is uh, playing on the side of the angels actually it is for the for the for human beings for us for god it says for he has not put the world to come of which we speak in subjection to angels so that that means the world to come is also going to be in the control of us in the, in our just as god gave us the responsibility in genesis 1 the this responsibility is going to be carried forward in the world to come so this time is preparation time learning time training time so that we will be trained and equipped and prepared and made ready for the governing with god in the world to come uh, let me read 1 corinthians 6 2 and 3 do you not know that the saints will judge the world and if the world will be judged by you are you not worthy to judge the smallest matters paul is writing to the corinthians and verse 3 1 corinthians 6 3 do you not know that we shall judge angels do you not know that we shall judge angels how much more things that pertain to this life now this is about this life but when you come to daniel chapter 7 i would like to read a few verses in the book of daniel daniel chapter 7 verse 18 18 but the saints uh, first it begins in verse 14 where the the kingdom the new kingdom is handed over uh, to uh, to jesus jesus comes and receives the kingdom from uh, from the one who seated seated on the throne then verse 18 daniel 7 18 but the saints of the most high shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever even forever and ever daniel 7:22 until the ancient of days came and judgment was made in favor of the saints of the most high and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom daniel 7:27 then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people the saints of the most high his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him friends the word of god is telling us that dominion is is a primary task for us in creation it begins in genesis 126 and it is it is fully the whole understanding is more clearer more more uh, uh, more uh, elaborately developed in genesis 128 and there we see the fifth dimension of the creation mandate is the aspect of having dominion and to take responsibility that is the leadership dimension of our organizations so i've, I've covered this um this is a big topic and as i said uh, please uh, you uh, uh, google cultural mandate you will see a lot of material on this from various uh, people and uh, you 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 realize this is really what god has intended for us and i i leave it at this point may the lord bless this understanding for us and make our organizations to truly be organizations that are governed from a biblical framework May the Lord bless us. Thanks so much, uh, Valen. Uh, yeah, you have uh, ignited our thought process. Uh, there are a lot of questions that we have, many of us have, but we'll uh, take some time. Uh, not now. At the end, we will give a space for that. Uh, before I hand over hand over the session to uh, Mr. Raja Christopher, who's the uh, director for uh, organization development and capacity building uh, i just wanted to introduce one slide to all of us uh, cim is in the process of uh, will be sending you a short survey uh, it will be on the google form uh, this short survey what we wanted to do is the intention is to understand uh, what is happening you know in the, among the ministry leaders Uh, as COVID uh, overtaken us, or uh, or we have uh, taken control of COVID, you know, uh, the COVID cannot take control of us. 
the Lord is in control. We want to understand, you know, what's happening because we receive lots of signals. Uh, we keep uh, receiving lot of uh, good, uh, good uh, best practices and good kingdom value practices, but we also have received lot of some uh, disturbing uh, news. So we want to know. We want to understand. We as we collect this information, we want to place it before the Christian leaders for all our benefit. You know, as, as Valen was saying, Luke wrote a beautiful letter uh, to Theophilus. Two beautiful letters to Theophilus. And that letter was useful for millions and millions and for generations to come. Maybe this small survey will help our uh, mission leaders to look at things in perspective and understand. So a small survey to understand the crisis preparedness of ministry leaders, to know if they have uh, an organizational ability to handle crisis, to know their uh, spiritual preparedness as we handle this crisis, to know the critical role of leadership in this crisis. And last, uh, to understand the emerging challenges in the area of how we manage our people, how we manage the resources God has given to us, and how governance uh, has played a crucial role in the decisions that we have taken. So this is a small survey which will be sent to all of us. We invite you to participate in this survey. It will take a few minutes, but your valuable inputs will be of help. Now I'll go to, I'll introduce uh, Mr. Raja Christopher. He's our Director for Organization Development and Capacity Building. He has been serving with the CIM for over seven years, and uh, his team goes across the nation, uh, interacts with many Christian organizations and leaders, and tries to help them uh, in uh, putting their house in order. That's what I should say. Uh, helping our friends to put the house in order uh, from a biblical mandate. You know, so he is going to share with us some of his lessons. Then we will move into a time of questions uh, with uh, Valen. Over to Mr. Raja. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Anandan, uh, for the very uh, vivid introduction. Uh, in fact, I'm trying to... Uh, Reckon and munch what uh, uh, Valenon has uh, uh, poured into our hearts. Uh, I hope the same thing uh, will be there in the minds of other leaders also. But um, we would like to. I would like to go through uh, um, in a short. Uh, uh, David, can you share these slides, David? We will. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. The next slide, then the same. Uh, I just wanted to juxtapose uh, the, the biblical uh, connotations that uh, Mr. Wellen was giving to us and try to link it to the current situation, which is little challenging to us. Uh, uh, what I thought is, what are our, the current priorities uh, during this pandemic uh, for the governance in particularly mission organizations? How do we approach it? Yeah, next. What are the challenges uh, that we are facing? These, these are not the exclusive or the exhaustive challenges. Uh, we have all the offices are shut. Majority of our operations are shut. We are not able to have our uh, regular meetings. We are able to meet only on uh, through the Zoom. Many of the uh, programs, the projects are closed. Uh, funds have started uh, uh, not coming into us. Staff are very much challenged. They don't know what to do. They are perplexed. And uh, we don't know what is happening in the environment. We are not getting solid input from the government. A lot of uh, these things are happening around us. But uh, are we losing our heart? What are we? How is, uh, how is our response as uh, governance of an organization? How are we going to do? The governance, as um, Valen and Ms. Valentine was putting, the, I love the five uh, commands that uh, today uh, Mr. Valentine was sharing. If we divide it into the three-dimensional role, there are these are the three dimensions. The first 
first dimension of governance is giving direction. So direction through vision, direction to mission, direction through policies, major policies and the plans. So that the first dimension of governance is directional governance. The second governance, the second dimension is uh, overseeing. Overseeing is not uh, uh, from the literal meaning of the word overseeing, but it is ensuring compliance, ensuring that there are performance and financial audits in the organization. Ensuring is not giving deadlines and doing it, but taking the responsibility, owning of the responsibility. So overseeing of the governance, the role means own. The third uh, dimension uh, is the role of governance is protection. How how do uh, how is the uh, the protection taken care by the governance by through internal controls, loyalty measures, and uh, strategic decisions? How strategic decisions are being implemented in the organization? These are the three dimensions of the governance rules. I think we can straight away take these three dimensions into the five commands that Mr. Valen was uh, trying to share with us. So there is a direct link between these and God's word. How are we able to, uh, what are the dimensions that are uh, that we have got to add more importance to in our respective organizations? The next is uh, the, uh, the three uh, duties, the three types of duties. So one is the dimension of uh, responsibility of governance. The second is the duties, the three dimensional duties. As governance, there are three dimensions. First dimension of duty is the duty of care. Uh, what is the duty of care? Prepare for and attend board meetings. You know, at this point of time, uh, what is the duty of care that uh, as member of a board, as an executive, am I able to give my time? So things related to this forms under the duty of care and duty of loyalty is conflict of interest. What is that? Am I trying to give room for my personal interest to override my organizational interest? That is the duty of loyalty. The third duty of obedience is the, it is relating to the helping compliance congruence. So these are the three dimensions of the duty. First, we saw the three dimensions of the role of uh, governance. The second is the three dimensions of the duties of uh, governance. Yeah, next. What are uh, we, uh, what is uh, imminent before us, before the governance? The first thing that is imminent before us uh, is the vision perpetuation. We are not, uh, we don't have to be our call as Mr. Wallen was uh, putting right from the beginning, our call is not to run the organization. No, we shouldn't be bothered. How do I run the organization? We instead, uh, our call is to ensure that there is vision perpetuation. Our vision, the God-given vision lives. Second is we try to modify the mission so that it fits into the needs of the pandemic situation. How do we do that? Instead of doing that, we don't have to say it will be, it's going to be difficult for us to pursue on our vision, continue our mission, those things. Instead of telling that, what is the modification that uh, I may have to do as a governance person in my organization? What are the policy variations that governance need to think? Policies have, don't have to, we don't have to change exactly but there are certain variations that are that may be required in the policies of organizations that we may have to see. What is the level of communication that is essential that has to emanate from the organization and as well from the governance side? So communication is one very crucial thing that has got to happen from the governance point of view at this point of time. Then the security onus, the onus of securing the organization, the various stakeholders of the organization, starting from the staff and the beneficiaries of the organization, the security, 
not only the security against the pandemic uh, situation, but security against a lot of other things which will be connected as overflow of the pandemic situation. So these are the imminent accountabilities. The last uh, accountability might be empowering the executive. So that should be one of the important uh, accountability that the governance area need to understand. How do we know? We need to move from scrutiny to assistance. The role of governance need at this point of time to move from scrutiny to be a source of assistance. That is the first thing. The second thing would be we need to move from reporting, asking information to seeking information so that when you seek information, you also become a source of the answer. You are not only the question. Uh, David, am I getting the, yeah, thank you. Thank you. The third uh, dimension of empowering the executive is from framework, it is becoming a guidance. Now, instead of uh, policy frameworks and stopping there, giving policy frameworks and stopping there, it becomes a continuous and constant guidance in the form of uh, support by through prayers, in the form of uh, different assistance, even being physically next to uh, the executive. That is the uh, another uh, area of empowering the executive. The last one is uh, the, we have to move, the governance has to move from compliance to consolidated. I don't deny the fact that we have to take care of compliance. It is uh, the responsibility of governance to be aware of compliance, but we don't have to stop with that. We don't have to only focus on compliance. Instead, we need to focus more on consolidation. Uh, uh, these are. This is how the governance role can empower the executives and the staff in turn. So um, this is how the existing situation is expecting the role of governance in, to be played during a challenging situation like this. How are we able to do this? I'm not throwing it as a challenge, but I thought uh, uh, the provoking thinking, uh, the, uh, the thoughts that were shared by Valentine uh, will also definitely help us to think through. Uh, CIM is um, in a position to offer view of assistance to uh, churches and mission organizations. Um, we, there are a lot of services that um, the audit department of uh, Christian Stock Management is offering. We offer, um, uh, the apart from the training programs conducted, the webinars conducted by our training department, and the courses, the online courses, uh, the third batch of which is going on by the, our course department, uh, there are uh, initiatives uh, by the audit department also. Organizations can keep in touch with us uh, if you have any requirement. Uh, yeah, next. Next uh, slide. Yeah, uh, we uh, we also we have also planned for online insights and retreats for, especially for board members where senior leaders uh, will be engaging with the board members, not only helping them to respond to the uh, challenging situation, but also uh, helping uh, senior governance members to be able to. Uh, plan for the future and uh, also in turn plan for the situation currently. So the, those kind of uh, programs are also available as part of uh, CIM's OD uh, department. Next. We also have online OD consultation when uh, leaders face uh, particular issues in terms of uh, compliance, finance, HR, property, or any other challenges uh, during this very particular situation, uh, CIM's OD department is available uh, to offer consultations online. Next, David. Uh, apart from these, um, we are continuing our uh, organizational capacity building services and uh, organizational climate checkup services, and we are also changing our mode of offering continuous uh, consultancy services uh, to organization. Uh, we'll be pleased, we are prayerfully prepared to be of assistance to churches and mission leaders of this nation. Thank you. Over to Mr. Anand Joshua for the question and answer sessions. 
So I think he's uh, just got disconnected because I think there's a power cut in his area. Okay, then uh, now the floor is open for uh, the participants. Uh, you can, if you have a question, you can uh, use the chat box and type the question. Uh, Mr. David will post it uh, for Mr. Valentine to respond. Or if you want to raise uh, the question, ask the question, please, uh, you can use the raise hand option so that you can, uh, you will be unmuted and you will be given opportunity to ask the question. Go to the participants for question, please. Use the chat box. Well, this is Chiranjeevi speaking from Hyderabad. Let me first of all thank uh, Brother Valentin Devadar for his uh, uh, talk on uh, especially five dimensions taken from the Word of God and also uh, governance related challenges and missions taken by Dr. Raja Christopher. Uh, the three dimension plan of governance and also three dimensional duties of governance and executive uh, empowerment. Well, uh, this is a very good uh, platform for the CEOs or uh, board executives or board members to learn about these things because many of our missions, especially smaller missions do not have much knowledge about this. And uh, missions who have got about 50 or more have real problems in, in good governance, whether it is board governance or uh, uh, the other staff governance or executive governance. And then I find difficulties because I see some of the small and had a very good uh, research done for Seva Bharat by CIM some years ago. And they brought out a uh, lot of things. And some of the things is, uh, the things are uh, related to legal, legal audit. And uh, in governing, uh, governance challenges, the legal auditor is also important for the boards. Legal audit is not for the persons, individuals, but uh, the way they are functioning, their, you know, their, uh, their constitution, you know, these are also important. I don't think uh, one hour, two hours will be sufficient for these, though I appreciate and I thank and very helpful to him because I have taken notes of this. Because in the beginning, I was told that you'll be sending PPTs and uh, notes but later on, I received a letter that you are not sending them. Uh, not letter. I just saw it here. You're not sending them. So I took notes of some of the things. I cannot take every note, but I have taken notes of all these things. I tell you, these are, uh, uh, these are the times where uh, mission as well as a church also to raise up to the occasion for, uh, uh, for good governance of their boards or for their for their organizations. And best practices are lacking in many of the organizations because many CS, Christian CS tell me that Chiranjeevi, uh, it is very difficult to deal with, uh, uh, with some of the mission organizations. And the worst is the churches also. So CIM, uh, I'm not suggesting, I'm not a man, uh, I'm a very small man to suggest things like that, but this could be coordinated both for the church and mission also. We should not neglect the mission, the church, because uh, our motive or the purpose of mission is church. So being a missions man from Seva Bharat giving, offering services to the missions of 2,500 every year. And uh, we planted number of churches, though we don't own it, but they have it, they're all independent. They don't have any, umbrella organization to do it, but they're multiplied. You know, one person in 20 years of time, uh, he has uh, planted 
850 churches. And uh, he has trained about uh, 650 um, pastors and evangelists. But they do not have, he just, they just go about and do the work and uh, they do not know about how to organize themselves except the Holy Spirit, whatever the, they're led by the Holy Spirit, they do it. So there is a, there is a need for uh, the churches which have come out of missions to have uh, an opportunity of listening to your talks and participating in it. And I'm glad that you are planning for a retreat, online retreat for uh, um, um, board members and also executives. That is uh, very good. And uh, there will be a lot of, uh, there are already changes, you know, during the COVID. And also after the COVID situation, we'll, we'll have many changes. Our lifestyles will change and our missions work also might change. We do not know uh, where we are heading it. So whatever you have uh, shown on the screen have been very touching to me, very important um, because we need to find a way out to, uh, to help missions to grow. Grow in order to serve the people. That there must be people-centric and loving. That is the mandate that we have from the creator that we need to do, but at the same time, manage and uh, be better stewards of that. So we are really heading towards uh, something which is going to be, uh, I do not know, unique, unique through your services, because uh, we don't have other people who are doing the service. We know uh, Sanjay Patra does services that exclusively uh, professional services they give. Um, that is a different way of doing things, but your way of doing things is also uh, very crucial and very important for us. So therefore, take consideration of it. But this, as far as this, these two sessions are concerned, I'm quite happy and satisfied, but needs more um, interaction uh, with the leaders who are already involved in it, who have got a practical experience. Because uh, as a small person from my childhood, I've been involved and I gained some experience, but uh, this is not a platform now on the online to share those things. But sometime uh, when this lockdown is over and coronavirus is dead, and I'm sure that we'll be able to gather together again at that time, we can have some series of uh, retreats or workshops to train up our people because you said, you know, uh, we have to be prepared. Readiness is uh, uh, very important. Uh, if you are not ready, you cannot uh, face the challenges. So prepare the people and make them ready, both for the second coming of Jesus and the, and the kingdom of God, which is going to be established at the same time, the challenges that we face in, uh, in our uh, nations. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I mean, I've taken much time. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. David, there is a question, David. Yeah, I'll just uh, share the screen. Uh, yeah, this was the first question. What is the difference between governing board and advisory or council? Raja, 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 Raja I'd like to answer that. No, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Anand, Anand, I would like Anand to respond to that. I will also compliment you. Yeah. Yeah. You are the guys who are <laughs> in it mostly. Raja, you can. Yeah, Raja, you can. You can. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, the uh, the primary difference is the advisory board doesn't have the power of a governing board. The governing board is the policy making board. <laughs> Uh, one thing I would like to borrow, I wanted uh, Valenanan to respond uh, because I, I always cherish uh, one thing that uh, he would underline on the importance of the governing board is discerning God's mind for the organization. So governing boards, uh, the powers, uh, they are the policy makers, they are the decision makers. The advisory board will give counsel, but the decision will rest upon the board, the governing board. Thank you. 
That's very good. David, can I also interact there? Uh, brother, Hello? we have very few minutes, brother. Yeah, one minute. We have... Advisory, advisory council or whatever it is. They also play a very crucial role in finding board members. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Rudra. David, the next. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this question is: uh, We are talking about budgets, and I, I I remember what I said, especially related related to the first dimension of the creation mandate, which relates to uh, the uh, being customer conscious. Uh, I I said in in profit. Profit organizations, many times the biggest hurdle is that the organization, the company, the uh, the whole uh, the whole outlay becomes profits driven. Everything is driven by profits. With what makes more profits gets more attention and all of that. Uh, and the customer slowly gets sidelined. That happens in profit organizations. Now, what happens in uh, non-profit organizations? I sadly. I, I sadly witness this, that budgets become the issue. Now, budgets are very good. Budgets are very necessary, very important, and has to be there as, as, a, uh, as, a, as, a, as the uh, outlay that we place before us as we do go forward. But it must always be the vision. It must always be our customers. It must always be the end user to which to whom we have to become sensitized. And that is why... We need spiritual understanding. We need the dimension of the Holy Spirit. Lord, what is it that you want us to do? Uh, we cannot afford to become uh, you know, contained and, and regulated and restricted by the budget. Budget is necessary. It is like the scaffolding. The scaffolding of a building, you have to have the budget. But the, but the building is different. Uh, the, the, the scaffolding cannot become the building. It, it helps, but uh, I must be able to see beyond. I must be, and we must en encourage and, and uh, challenge our staff to look beyond budgets. And, and that is where the faith dimension comes. You know, sadly, when we are budget driven and we say, oh, this is all the budget that is there. This is what we can do. This is what we cannot do. We cannot undertake this. We cannot take up this. Then... We are, we are absolutely cutting off faith. Uh, yes, this is a very spiritual matter because you need spiritual, spiritually mature people uh, in leadership to, to be able to discern and say, yes, God is leading us in this direction. This is what we need to do. It is not somebody's uh, you know, uh, emotional excitement. They get very emotionally excited and enthused. Oh, let's take up this activity. Let us take up that activity. That is dangerous, definitely very, very dangerous. That is immaturity. You need, we need mature, godly people to discern the thought of God, the mind of God in the current situation. What does God want the organization to do? Even if the budget does not permit us, let's trust God and let us move forward. Let us take those steps. That is what I mean. Uh, I think this is brother Money. Uh, Money, Philip was asked this question. So I want to encourage you, Money, that... Uh, be, be spiritually discerning. Uh, budgets are good. Budgets are necessary, but we need spiritually led leaders to see beyond budgets and say, what is it that the organization is set up for? What, are, what does our end customer require? How can we meet their need? That must be the fire that must, must be passionately burning in our hearts. Thank you. Well, uh, David, uh, yeah. we don't have any questions, right? No other questions yet. Yeah, yeah. we ha we are almost uh, we have crossed the uh, timeline, but we want to share uh, just uh, two or three slides before we close. You can feel free to stay back for some time. You can uh, exchange pleasantries, and you know we can ask some questions. Feel free. Uh, just. Uh, some of uh, two or three minutes, I finished the formal program. Uh, we are uh, we are going to have a, a follow up. We are going to have a, another webinar, which is uh, going to be a deep dive webinar uh, on the areas of IT and social media for NGOs. So this is going to happen on 25th, that is coming Monday, between 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. 
it will be focused it will be very helpful for mission agencies and uh, uh, people who are involved in uh, you know mission agencies into this area social media to just listen to professor samuel johnson uh, from uh, velour institute of technology the ap school of business so he will be taking session that is one uh, information that we want to place before you the next one is uh, we are also in the coming days uh, we are, all, are going to have a series of webinars one will be on uh, indigenous resource mobilization uh, in june second week we will share so uh, we will keep sending you the alerts on what's happening we are going to have another uh, little more deeper uh, a, um, concentration on the governance and succession planning in july so that is also will be uh, those are two things which we are going to uh, conduct in the next few days so please uh, follow us and uh, we will keep you posted uh, lot of, you can visit our website christian institute of management and also another uh, website called christian manager so you will be able to see lot of information mainly you can visit christian institute of management uh, website is cimindia.in so there you can see lot of information that is available uh, we'll also come your uh, email ids are with us we will share with you we will share all the uh, the for upcoming events we will share with you so that it will be useful for all of us thank you so much thank you valen for your uh, excellent uh, you know uh, insights and encouragement for all of us uh, we will continue to as uh, dr saranjeevi said that we will continue to cherish and enjoy and uh, look forward to further engagement thank you thank you so much yeah feel free to if thank uh, feel free to stay back we will have it for another 10 minutes and uh, you can uh, we welcome uh, Uh, Reverend John Kirbagran, our board secretary, who is, is there. I have a small question to Mr. Christopher. Yes. Uh, yes. Anna, you please. mentioned about uh, mission modification yes. under uh, imminent accountabilities. Yeah. So, uh, whether it is a mission modification at this point of time or strategy modification. to fulfill the mission we already set for yeah uh, the the importance is we we don't have any authority to touch our vision so vision is becoming an uncompromising tool but we can have modifications in our mission statement which is contributing to our vision statement and the mission modification can happen like what you said through the strategies and the policy changes if that the organization has got to take your your observation is correct thank you thank you any uh, feel free to have any questions to mr valentine yeah we have uh, five more minutes and then we will close well, we got one question from uh, yeah yes yeah, yeah. Uh, yes david uh, you were saying something Okay. Yeah, David, no, no, ahead, no. You, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the question is from Mr. Sanjay Bhattacharya. Uh, when we work as an organization, budget compliance is a requirement, and faith is important for mobilizing budget. Uh, so I think uh, he has posted that in the chat. Uh, definitely. I mean, faith is underlying. Uh, so everything. Uh, uh, we our trust in God underlines everything. Mobilizing the budget. mobilizing funds is is dependence on god we trust god in every step at every at every point uh, faith can never be uh, you know sidelined at all no way uh, but i'm saying budget is necessary budget compliance is necessary that is but at the same time uh, i must we must be sensitized to the issues that are happening around us sensitized to what god is leading us into and that is where spiritual discernment uh, is and spiritual maturity is required so sanjay it's a, it's a very delicate balance uh, it is not easy it 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 can it 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 is like a uh, you know it is like a time bomb it may burst <laughs> but challenging that is what leadership is all about not what is it that you want us to do where do you want us to go lord let us not get constrained by budgets 
Lord, we want to see ahead. We want to move forward. So you have to have budget compliance. No way can you eliminate that. At the same time, uh, uh, to have a heart that is responding to what God is saying and what God is showing us in terms of the circumstances and situations around us. So Sanjay, your question is very correct. Uh, but at the same time, I'm just trying to you know, explain how this work is so exciting. It is so exciting because God wants, God does not give us everything in, ahead of us and, and give us a complete blueprint. But he wants us to trust him one step at a time. Trust him, trust him, trust him. And he opens the door, uh, beautifully opens the door. And we all know that when we look back in our life, in our organizational uh, uh, journey, uh, do, have we not witnessed the way God opened doors? Amazing, isn't it? All of us yeah. can testify yeah. how amazingly God opened doors and God provided for us when we look back. But why is it that we look ahead, we become concerned and worried? That is the time for us to say, Lord, if you have looked, looked after us, guided us, led us so beautifully in the past, you are the same God who is ahead of us in the future as well. So that, Sanjay, is my, uh, my thought here. Add to what uh, Valen was saying, uh, yeah, at World Vision, when we used to discuss on numbers, uh, we do not want, intentionally do not want to be overwhelmed by the numbers. The data and numbers should not drive what we are doing. How we are connected above, how our faith drives us is more important. There will be a lot of numbers that will there be before us. The budget will overwhelm us. And uh, if we are uh, driven by the budget, then we are going in a different direction. So how we are connected above is key. So this uh, great lessons that we were working along with Valen in World Vision. Thank you, Valen, for those insights. One more last question. Thank you. If others others are not having, I just thought. Uh, yes. uh, uh, my brother Valent, can you just uh, elaborate a little on the Zyla's uh, dangers under okay. the third command, filling Zylo dangerous? You were referring that the Zylos were uh, are very Zylo. dangerous. Zylo. Zylos. Yeah. In, so yeah. Working in silos is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I'm saying, uh, Raja, is, is that uh, in the, within intra, uh, inter, uh, within the organization, uh, in, in, internally within the organization, uh, we must cultivate interdependency. Very important. So dangerous when when departments become silos and they begin to think that I am I am only doing administration, I am only doing uh, you know fundraising, and I don't know what is happening in terms of uh, you know the other departments or research department what they are doing. I'm, that is very dangerous. There has to be constant interconnection, interflow of ideas, uh, nurturing, caring, sharing, uh, and cross-pollination of views and ideas must be happening within organizations. And the same understanding must, must rise up above organizations. And from organization to organization, we need to have the understanding and maturity that we are together building the kingdom of God. Today in our country, we this is one of our big problems as, as, as God's people. We are very, very divided, highly divided. We, are, we have so many bar barriers that we have created amongst ourselves, denominationally or work-wise. In so many ways, we have created barriers. We have to dismantle all these barriers and say, look, we are all God's people. And you have strengths in certain areas. I have... I have strength in some other area. Let us work together. Let us support each other. Let us build together because we have a common destination. We have a common goal. So this filling of the earth matter is to come out of our silos. Mm -hmm. This is all, this mindset, this breaking the silos and saying, I am not the final authority. I'm only, I'm, I, I have certain skills. God has blessed me with certain, certain areas of, of, uh, of growth and development in certain areas, which I like, which I want to make available for the body of Christ and for the work of the kingdom of God. Uh, and that also is, is also connected to understanding that every field is God's field. So every field, science, engineering, medicine, every field is God's field. No field can be, can be put aside and say that is secular. 
we are sacred mm. this sac- sacred secular divide is one of the <laughs> biggest uh, you know curse i should say biggest <laughs> curse for the body of christ we have unfortunately built up this divide called the sacred and the secular there is nothing called secular we are all sacred every field is god's field we must penetrate every field we must raise up our children saying look you you are studying not for a career not for a job not to make money but to bring everything under the rule of god under the under the reign and, and supremacy of god so science is is, a, is is god's engineering is god's you know sadly what we have done is we have allowed the world to run each of these uh, domains and what has happened is when when people of the world run these domains satan operates through them so satan's agenda is being worked out through people into each of these domains when it is actually god's people who should provide leadership in these domains uh, so uh, this fill the earth dimension of the creation mandate is a very massive uh, area of of understanding that we need to have thank you and i don't think we have sufficiently you know uh, discussed it and understood it yeah yeah we may need uh, separate uh, sessions on each of the mandates mandates yeah <laughs> thank you thank you thank you anand thank you all yeah. thank you for thank you. the interview yeah please thank be in touch with us feel free to yes. be in touch with us we will be able to feel free to be in touch with the uh, this is valentine also you know we'll be he'll be of great help to all of us thank you god bless you thank you it's a wonderful session thank yeah, you very much thank you to the team thank you thank you god bless you thank you